This book reuses the last book's premise of having a traditional holiday, and it's the third holiday book in a row. I think the Babysitter's Club series was starting to run out of ideas at this point. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. This book was written by Peter Larangis. Mallory and Jesse start by playing pretend. I was Jezebel Cooslet. Jesse was my sister, Daphne. We were French refugees visiting London for the first time. That's a weird premise. I bet Jesse only went along with it because she's tired of Mallory's favorite game, Let's Pretend to be Horses! Their game is interrupted by crowds of shoppers. Mallory decides shopping is awful. She wants an old-fashioned, traditional Christmas, with nothing commercial or artificial. Her family members happily agree to the plan, even though in real life, kids would be horrified at the idea of no one buying them presents. They invite Uncle Joe over for Christmas. Uncle Joe says everybody at the retirement home is obsessing over their holiday boutique. Chrissy thinks it'd be a great idea for the Babysitter's Club to help the old folks prepare the boutique. And no, 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 not again. We've had a lot of preparation in the series recently. In the last four books, these are the subplots. Preparing a Christmas party, preparing Dawn's farewell party, preparing carnival booths, and preparing Thanksgiving dinner. Could we stop with the preparation subplots, please? Let's get back to the kids having problems! That was way better than five preparation plots in five books. Luckily, the subplot is saved by Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe shows up a fair amount, and he's pretty awesome! I like him! And his Alzheimer's was handled well, so the overused preparation subplot was actually good in this book! It's a Christmas miracle! Vanessa signs the family up for a Be On TV contest. Of course, they win. A director named Chad Henry arrives and offers them $10,000 in exchange for filming their special holiday. Mom and Dad aren't so sure about having TV cameras follow them for the whole month, but the kids are super excited, so they agree. Christy is also excited, and tries to turn it into free advertising for the Babysitter's Club. Typical Christy. It ends up being less exciting than Mallory expected, as there's only one or two cameras. They make gingerbread cookies and visit Santa at the mall. Hey, I thought this wasn't supposed to be a commercial Christmas. Mallory is annoyed when the director makes them go up the escalator seven times. Then the director tries to cut to the front of the line to see Santa. People yell at them, and the store manager comes and tries to kick them out, because apparently he hates having free advertising for his store. Mallory is totally embarrassed. They go to a Christmas tree farm. Mallory gets mad when she's forced to repeat a scene a few times. Thanks to reshoots and interruptions, the trip ends up taking much longer than it should. Mallory decides she's sick of TV filming. The only time she has fun is when the cameras aren't around, at a babysitter's club party and the boutique. They change four dirty diapers at the boutique. Yuck. I thought it was a general rule that if the parents are physically present when their baby poops, then the parents have to change the diaper. It is super rude to force other people to change your kid's diaper when you are four feet away. On Christmas Eve, the Pikes are forced to do a big last-minute scramble and prepare everything in a huge rush. They get mad at the TV crew over this, which is totally unfair. It's not like it's their fault you didn't buy enough food today. They do a secret Santa gift exchange, and Byron blows up when the director calls for a reshoot. He doesn't want to wait an extra minute before opening his presents! Please note that until this chapter, Mallory's family members loved being on TV and showed no real signs of disliking it. Suddenly, all of them decide they hate being filmed! The TV crew ruins everything! So they decide to cancel the contract and return the money. What? It's Christmas Eve! You have one more day of filming left! Seriously, just put up with this for a little bit longer and you get a ton of money! This is a terrible decision to cancel the show at the last minute! Dad kindly but firmly explains things to the director. The crew goes away. 
Uncle Joe and the BSC visit on Christmas, and Mallory gets her wish of having a wonderful holiday. The end. Postbook follow-up. This book came with a punch-out ornament to hang on your holiday tree. The premise of this book is neat. Who doesn't want to be a reality TV star? It was an okay behind-the-scenes look at the world of TV. I liked how the TV crew was made up of nice people instead of making them blatant villains who ruined Christmas. Between the non-antagonists and Uncle Joe's Alzheimer's, I'd say this book has the subtlety and nuance that the previous book sorely needed. It's also a funny book if you want to be entertained by Mallory's wild family members acting crazy all the time, this is a good choice. The only drawback to the high-energy hijinks is the ending, where they all do a complete 180 and decide they hate acting up for the cameras. <laughs> yeah, even though they've been doing that for over 100 pages. But it's not that bad. There was enough foreshadowing of Mallory hating the TV crew, so it works. Overall, it is a fluffy, feel-good holiday book with the generic message that loving your friends and family is the true meaning of Christmas. It's not a classic by any means, but it's pretty good for what it is, and there's not much room for improvement. I give Babysitter's Club number 92, Mallory's Christmas Wish, a 7 out of 10.